Great. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Dent uh, workshop. We'll maybe give like 60 seconds for folks to connect, and then we'll uh, we get started. I don't do the books. Maybe we give a couple minutes once we get going. Uh, so we'll start in like uh, four, four minutes plus. Yeah, it looks like folks are dialing in. Yeah, for those that are just dialing in, we're just giving another minute or two for folks to connect and then we'll we'll get started. Great. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to the DENT workshop, uh, sort of introduction to the DENT operating system, uh, as we kind of coined the term switch data of NOS for the rest of us. Um, with that, I uh, hope everyone is staying healthy uh, and we look forward to doing this actually at some point in person. Uh, on this virtual stage joining me today is, we have Rupa Prabhu, who's the uh, Media and previously the chief architect at Cumulus Networking and, and has a background in kernel networking. And we have Steve Noble, a senior engineer at Amazon. Uh, he's the TSC chair, the technical steering committee chair for DENT. 
Uh, Steve is also uh, the president of NetDef, which is a nonprofit which provides uh, services to the FRR community. Both uh, Rupa and Steve are early adventurers in the open networking switch step sort of bare metal switching revolution that we are seeing these days. And I'm uh, Trishan Delandral, uh, the, the Lynx Foundation. I'm the technical program manager and community architect responsible for sort of the layer two, layer three projects, including DENT um, and DPDK and Fido. With that, um, welcome. The, we're here with, to introduce sort of a new project that is just that not to be announced back in December at the Linux Foundation called DENT. It's a open NAS for networking, sort of focused at the campus edge, uh, remote office and branch office, with uh, initial use case as a focus on the retail market. And we're trying to do this for a new NAS with sort of the Linux kernel way. And we'll go into that detail in the presentations to follow. Uh, as we say, we are sort of at the beginning of this journey for Dent, and we're looking to engage with the community and grow a vibrant community around it. And on that, today's program, we'll sort of take a look back, see how we got here with the, looking at the history, the networking project, we'll introduce you to Dent. We'll talk about switch dev, Linux kernel switching uh, that we've built in. We have a live demo for you with the code. Uh, we hope to run this live. Uh, it's uh, always a adventure and a risk to do that, but we need to try. <laughs> And uh, finally, we'll talk about how you can get involved in the different ways you can participate in the DENT project. With that, I'll uh, hand over to Steve. Hello, everyone. Um, Steve Noble from Amazon. So most of you are probably experienced somewhat in, in what open networking is. It's been going on for oh, over a decade. Um, realistically, probably, quite a few decades if we think about you know when we were using uh, linux boxes with nix in them as routers and and things of that nature but the real the real value to open networking today has been the ability to replace legacy vendors cisco juniper um, vendors who didn't offer um, options for example if you needed to get a fix for a feature you had to request it from the vendor and it might take six, 12 months or you might not get it. But um, open networking would allow for you to fix it yourself or to get a community fix or pay somebody to fix it really um, makes it a lot simpler. So I kind of use uh, Pronto and which is always a, a part of uh, Quanta as, the, as one of the early open networking um, companies. And they started um, producing switches for, for some large vendors who, who were looking at options. And then um, Acton, Edgecore, and Quanta both started producing switches in mass, right? We, we started seeing um, things like the Acton AS5712, which is, by far one of the the most used switches out there, at least from the the standpoint of labs and doing um, open networking testing and, and things of that nature. Oni, which uh, came from Cumulus Networks, um, was a huge advancement. Previous to Oni, you actually had to burn the software directly onto the memory card and put it back in. So I, I remember historically taking switches apart, taking the memory card out, putting them in another system, writing the file system, then putting them back in. And ONI um, allowed for the ability to install, to uninstall, um, reinstall your, your operating system, which made it amazingly easier for people to be able to, to do the work. And then, um, I point out ONL. Um, I was the the public lead for the ONL project for about five years when I was at, at Big Switch, but ONL came out and just provided a, an OS, a network OS for for the switches. So 
So hardware software disaggregation networking. So as we know, um, enterprises and data centers have been proprietary um, from the silicon to the, the hardware, the operating system and the applications. With Linux, it allows the standardization of the silicon and the switch, and it enables the creation of a network operating system and applications. So here you see on the left in, in gray, the network OS running on top of hardware. And then in green, we have disaggregation, which is the network operating system really has a very small attachment to the hardware. It's, it's more open and it's able to be run on multiple systems, allowing for a more consistent view across the board. And then um, technically providing um, abstractions. And, and so you can see there on, on the right, the, the most important part about all of this is that we're able to do both infrastructure abstractions and hardware abstractions, and then provide a unified um, API to the applications. So software, it's a bit out of order, but initially what enabled open networking to happen were that there were open SDKs or APIs provided. And one of the first ones was OFDPA for OpenFlow, which then utilized Floodlight as a controller and a tool called Indigo to allow for for um, intercommunication. We also list OpenNSL and Psy there. They did come later, but they were part of the, the base. With, without these, it was almost impossible to have open networking. So started seeing open flow controllers um, around I think 2008 or so switch dev was introduced. And then I think 2011, it, it started to, to gain its footing and become more and more within the Linux kernel. And it continues to be worked on significantly at, at this time. In fact, there'll be significant changes in the 5.10 kernel, which as some of you may know, was announced to be the next LTS kernel for, for Linux. So we're very happy about that. And it's going to be very useful to us in our in our project. So, post the switch dev announcement, um, we started seeing more NASes coming on. We saw Sonic Open Switch and some other Open NASes, and they started to provide a more standardized view across the entire ecosystem. So in instead of having a, well, I can use Pronto again as an example, right? Instead of having a Pronto switch with the PCOS OS on it, and then having an edge core switch with a different OS on it, suddenly you had the ability to run the same OS across all of these different systems. And, and then now, we're basically announcing uh, Project Dent. So this uh, picture, a little complex, but the, the picture we're trying to get out is that, you know, uh, within uh, telecom, especially with the release of Danos from AT&T, um, you're, you're seeing better alignment and more push towards uh, openness. And then obviously uh, the Linux Foundation networking project handles a lot of this. Um, FRR is technically part of uh, LF uh, as is OpenSwitch. Um, when we go to the cloud networks, 
the point that's trying to be made here is that if you look at the major uh, internet properties, I suppose, you'll note that it, Facebook uses FBOSS and OpenR, and Google uses Stratum, and Microsoft uses Sonic, and all three of them use different SDK abstraction layers, OpenNSL, P4, Psi, and so there isn't a standardization really across the data center networks, but the biggest, I suppose, group of people who are, are utilizing in the data center networks would be the Sonic users. And so we're attempting to actually fit into a different space, which is the distributed enterprise, um, which allows for smaller organizations and specialty retail and, and things of that nature to have an open operating system. And a big point to what we're doing here with Dent is that Dent runs on Linux. You don't have to have any special um, code. All the kernel modules are open source. And, and once you've, um, you've built it and you run it, you're, you're not limited to, to any particular things. You're not signing. NDAs or SLAs with different organizations, and and you're not putting yourself in a position where where later it may cost you significant amount of uh, money and time to move away from a proprietary solution. Am I talking to this, sir? Yes. Yeah. So will you drive, sorry, uh, Trishan, do I drive the slides? How does this work? Or will you? Uh, I can drive it, just to let me know. OK, sounds good. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Rupa from NVIDIA, previously Cumulus Networks. Um, like Trishan introduced, I've been part of the open networking revolution since quite some time now. Um, so. All what Steve said, um, Dent is aiming at providing this completely open source uh, distribution for uh, NOS. And Linux has been doing this forever. Uh, Linux has supported hardware. Every um, new hardware is certified for Linux these days. It, the out of box experience, that's what uh, Dent uh, goal is. So the project itself, uh, why Linux and what are the guiding principles behind choosing this architecture uh, is again, out of box experience with hardware, just like how uh, server world has worked. And switch dev is the core piece of the architecture, which is essentially um, trying to support Linux networking stack hardware acceleration, like Linux has done before for NICs and smart NICs and uh, you know, NPUs. The same, um, the same guiding principle. Basically, you have a kernel supporting the hardware with drivers and uh, a, a NOS or an ecosystem and uh, operating system is built around that. And what this means is, again, switch ASIC hardware is treated um, like any other hardware for the Linux kernel networking data path. This simplifies abstractions. The Linux networking API becomes your API. Right, there is no need for a new API. Whatever, however, you dealt with your NIC uh, networking hardware with NICs and smart NICs, the same thing applies to switch ASICs. It's just that now you're seeing a box which is uh, showing you all uh, ports of uh, the switch as uh, network interface ports. The goal is again for the project itself to unify the community of switch vendors, ODMs and OEMs and end users across all verticals under this particular architecture, under this particular open source uh, ecosystem umbrella. Um, and the, it is edge first, 
basically for distributed enterprise edge, but you know we see it uh, expanding to enterprise data center uh, because the architecture allows you and the ecosystem is partners also allow you to do that. Next slide. This is again a picture telling you the same thing. Uh, basically under the Linux Foundation, we believe that all, it will bring all the silicon vendors, ODMs, system integrators and users, right? Uh, manufacturers as well under this Linux Foundation project to build this completely open source, full featured network operating system. Next slide. Tent uh, founding members. The premier members are the founding members, as you can see in the top um, two rows. And then we have general members and also new um, vendors coming in. And all these vendors have obviously signed up for switch dev and supporting the uh, hardware required for Dent. Next slide. So Dent um, uses the switch dev driver and I'll talk a little more on the switch dev driver itself in the later slides, the architecture itself around switch dev drivers. Uh, but the idea is you use the kernel drivers for switch ASICs, the Linux tools, whether it's your ETH tool or you know, your routing tools, your uh, debugging tools, whatever you used in your Linux server for your networking needs, all those apply directly. And the operating system abstraction for networking remains the same between, um, basically it's uniform between your server infrastructure and your networking infrastructure. And um, all underlying infrastructure, including the switch uh, um, silicon or whether it's uh, networking for the switch silicon or you know networking for a NIC, all that is treated equally with the kernel. It's a uniform model and it's, as you know, the Linux kernel is one single upstream project which caters to all of these hardware devices. So it becomes uh, even the cross pollination and you know about picking packages or tools between ecosystems, between server and uh, switching or the network fabric becomes way easier uh, with Dent. So having said that, um, uh, so switch dev is a kernel driver and of course it needs uh, ASIC vendors to actually submit the drivers upstream to the Linux kernel. And today it's uh, switch dev drivers we have today are Marvel and Mellanox. Um, and there are others in the works. Dent, um, again, uh, Dent partners with other uh, ecosystems. Uh, obviously it is based on Debian. We'll talk about that a little more uh, later in the slides. Um, we do uh, partner with Open Compute OCP project for hardware, for ONI, for ONL, which is uh, the base of base for Dent. Next slide. So why Dent? Um, wide access to hardware. Um, Dent will have its own and has its own. Uh, developing its own ecosystem of hardware partners. So that, and also collaboration with other uh, projects like OCP brings in that wide access to hardware, which is easily applicable to Dent. Um, support of existing Linux tool chains, um, which means that anything that you have uh, in the Linux Debian ecosystem or Ubuntu or Red Hat becomes available for Dent easily. That also means that uh, newer technologies that are being built or newer tools that are being built on Linux for servers, it just becomes uh, available readily. Um, recent examples like, you know, NAT or, you know, MacSec. Uh, as the kernel gets features for all of these and the tooling is done in the ecosystem for whether it's software or hardware implementations, it just becomes readily available across the board for the network fabric and the server infrastructure. Um, no abstractions, no extra abstractions. There is no need to add uh, another label, level of API for the network operating system or the network fabric. It's the same thing uh, for your server and network. Um, and of course, because we are not dealing with vendor blobs, it's a completely open source in kernel driver. You don't, uh, you don't have this additional time to integrate vendor SDKs and solve out their differences. Um, the upstream community 
actually standardizes as you submit drivers, it standardizes on the API, it um, makes your um, hardware easily maintainable and extendable in the Linux ecosystem. Next slide. Thank you, so, Rupa. Yeah. So uh, Den Focus, I mean, m all of us can talk to the same slide, but really the focus of Dent is to utilize and expand switch dev and support related upstream Linux kernel community. And we, we really want to accelerate the adoption of switch dev, dev link, these other tools in, in networking so that we can get to a standardized base where in, in general, most Linux based NASes are using switch dev. And the way that we do that is by putting together this project and, and essentially funding and, and helping to bring the community together so that we can get the features that, that are necessary into switch dev for it to operate in the different spaces. We're looking to standardize the silicon and switch software, right? We talked about this earlier and, and this is really to support disaggregation and, and accelerate innovation and provide a open source NOS reference implementation and applications that can be created to support the target market. So you know, the phase one is the distributed enterprise edge. So here, this is going to be your, your commercial, your commercial companies, your things like uh, warehouse, um, I guess specifically, you know, companies like Target or Walmart and, and things of that nature who have a, a distributed enterprise where they have a lot of different locations and they have a lot of pieces in there, a lot of IoT cameras, all of that inside the, uh, the network. Uh, phase two is to look at um, the enterprise data center that requires some more features in order to provide, you know, a spine leaf type of a, uh, a topology. And then phase three is to look at other other spaces based on on, on what we learn from the the board. So, dent with switch dev, embedded switch, right? Um, kind of a weird slogan, but it just works, is is essentially saying, if you have a, a piece of hardware that supports switch dev, then you can run Dent on it. And being Linux, you know, you, you already have this trust relationship with the kernel maintainers and with the distributions. And so you're, you're not going through a lot of, uh, certification testing, you're not going through a lot of penetration testing, code review and things of that nature. And instead you can focus on doing the features and the applications that you need. Um, One-time configuration. So you just configure it, you use standard Linux tools and, and essentially just turn on interfaces and we'll do a demo in a, in a bit, but basically just, you just configure it, right? Um, as we mentioned, no SDK, there's no SLA, there's no agreement with different vendors that, that may um, cause issues with your ability to, to um, add features or, or expand what you need. It's designed to be lightweight and have a, have high software quality. Are we answering questions in line? There is. Sure. Yeah, we, why don't we do that? Um, so we have a question from Mark here. Um, I'll just read it out. Um, often the biggest problem with writing switch dev drivers is missing documentation so far. 
Uh, can we expect that at least the project participants will provide documentation under conditions that allow open source drivers uh, with at least one of them? Uh, it was impossible in the past. Yes, I think, I think yes, that is right. Um, uh, kernel has um, participants like Mellanox have been actually uh, enhancing the kernel documentation as well to um, make this easier. And there are external wiki pages, and I'm sure the Dent wiki page will also have instructions on how to navigate uh, integrating or building new switch dev drivers. It's a good feedback. Thank you, Mark. Um, yeah, we have uh, Roman had a question uh, when, De when Dent NOS is going to be released, or is it already? Uh, you're, you're kind of stealing our thunder a little bit, so we'll, we'll get to that a little later in the uh, presentation. So there's a follow-up question on real register level docs. Um, so I think that that also depends on the vendor, uh, but if you are a dent participant and uh, you know willing to write drivers, I'm sure the vendors are willing to share specs, right? If, and this can happen in the Dent Live, uh, Dent uh, Development Forums. And one thing I'll, I'll point out with the addition of Marvell to the ecosystem, you, you now have multiple references within the Linux kernel to see how systems are added and, and how um, SwitchDev is implemented. And so I think that that's going to help other vendors as they move forwards to be able to add switch dev drivers. Yes. Thank you for the questions. Uh, keep them coming and we'll, we'll answer them as they come in. Ah, so your, your question, um, register level docs from Marvell. I don't think that there's a, an easy answer to that, um, but but you are correct. In in general, it is hard to get certain information from um, silicon vendors without having an SLA or or some some level of an agreement with them, and that's just standard across the board. But but here, what we're looking at is that, for example. Uh, Marvell has done the the implementation for the Prestera switches, right? Melnox has done the implementation for the Spectrum ASICs, right? So if we're looking for things outside of that, and I've seen discussions on our mailing list about doing this with uh, smaller chips from Marvell, then um, that does become a question, right? So our hope is that as we start to get open sourced hardware, the hardware will provide you with a lot of information. Ah, embedded uh, automated, automotive. Yeah, so there's actually some other things that we're gonna talk about later. And then um, there's, a, there's a project that that we're working with, which um, focuses on building a more embedded type of an operating system. But at the moment, Dent is expected to be for switches and, and not really meant to run on other things. And as we move forwards, we'll go ahead and, and be adding new ones. OK, so initial use case. So the initial use case is the retail edge. Um, technically, I, I could also say that remote office is within the, the use case. But right now, we're not focused on data center. And we're not heavily focused on campus. But we do have um, POE switches, which are useful in remote offices and campus network.
So big picture, um, the focus area, right? Retail is going to drive the, mech, the next major revolution in remote and distributed enterprise business locations to meet the next generation of consumer experience expectations, right? So that's, that's a statement that, that basically says, we see more and more automation. We see more and more um, tracking and um, machine learning and, and different tools being applied to, to networking where, where we, we need to have operating systems and, and switches that, that can easily add features onto them if necessary. And Dent's goal is, is to provide a, uh, the generic operating system that can then be expanded to to fit the needs of the different um, organizations. So I think people are seeing it, right? Um, we're seeing a a lot of interesting changes in retail, um, partly because of the the current pandemic. And this is a, actually a really good time to start looking at, at how we're going to modernize the networks going forwards, how we're going to provide differentiated services and, and things of that nation, uh, nation, and things of that nature um, within the retail infrastructure. And, so uh, this uh, basically came, we, we think, at, at a pretty good time. So the critical piece to net retail, networking. So if you look at any, any large organization, company, right? that any large stores, you, you're going to see that, that they have thousands, if not 10,000 of cameras, CCTV. Um, they're doing a lot of work with, um, with trying to automate and utilize that information to provide feedback to themselves and, and track, right? And then almost everything at this point in a store has some label and handheld scanners and those things that basically would be used to, to log what everything is and in real time update, you know, you, what do you have, what do you need, what's in the warehouse, ETC. Um, sensors, um, we're seeing sensors um, everywhere from the obvious sensors, right? The, the tags that go into the, the boxes that, um, that will cause alarms to go off if you leave the building um, to the sensors that are used in, in the, the pause systems, such as weight sensors and things of that nature, if you're doing your own, what we would call self-checkout. Um, you, you have a significant number of, of pause systems, um, whereas previously you were limited by the number of employees that you had who could run a cash register, these days we're seeing a lot of automation there. And so you have the ability to have more. <clears throat> and then these stores are 10, 40,000 square feet, um, sometimes bigger. And, and so these are the, the things that we're trying to address within Dent. So it's kind of a list of uh, the technologies that are behind the transformation, right? So digital cameras, electronic shelf, shelf labels, sensors, um, your HVAC, right? You know, monitoring the, the temperature within the different areas of the, of the building and making sure that, that everything is what it's supposed to be, RFID, um, lighting, card readers, Right. There, there's a lot of technology that, that's, that has previously been 
more of a hardwired proprietary system where, where we're now seeing this being replaced by um, generic systems that are being integrated using just uh, IP transit effectively. And then there are applications, right? People counting, line estimation, these are very important and have become much more important now with the pandemic in that in the, we're able to know how many people are in a store, how close are they? Um, I think I saw a, a cool video from, from a, a company where they showed how they could actually track people within a building and see if they were getting more than six feet or less than six feet from each other, they would actually light up um, different colored rings around them and things of that nature to help people have awareness of, of where they are and, and what they should be doing. Um, grab and go sales. I, I think it's uh, it's pretty much unknown that, that Amazon has done the ghost stores. And so that's that's part of this focus here is that there's a lot of technology involved in doing that with the ghost stores. And and so we have a significant investment in in hardware and we have significant investment in the networking equipment, which Another part of Dent that I, I don't know that we really discussed is, is Dent also allows to um, cost optimize hardware for the specific use case. So instead of using an off the shelf box from the ODM, you can actually use a, a specifically optimized box that, that is really for just POE, for example, or um, for just general networking um, with, without having the, the cost of, of buying this from a major vendor. Um, demand sensing, point of sales, shift management, stock control, right? All of this comes together and, and provides you with the big picture and optimizes your organization. So here, we're mainly talking about you know a, a standardized operating system across the retail network, right? There, there are so many pieces, and there's so much data that that's being dealt with today. Um, in transit project product, right? Knowing that what's coming when, um, behavior analytics, in motion inventory, right? Um, we have our our switches the gateways, IP cameras, access points, all of this is, is very important for there to be success in, in this growing retail space. And I'll turn it back to Rupa. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, before I just continue, I think there was a question about Cumulus Linux on with switch dev. I, we do get that question a lot. Uh, that is to be determined. Um, I, actually, as you know, Mellanox does have its own uh, uh, switch dev offering with Linux switch. And Cumulus Linux kind of gives, uh, provides that abstraction between switch dev and SDK based vendors. So there is not a huge gap between Cumulus Linux SDK and Cumulus Linux switch dev, but um, it depends on demand of how many people want to deploy it with switch dev. But like I said, Mellanox is a partner uh, in uh, the Dent project and they support Dent and they also have a switch, their own switch dev offering, which, can, which is a DIY solution for anybody who wants to build their own, kind of uh, very close to Dent. Um, so the Dent focus area, enterprise data center, um, well, uh, my, as you know, uh, the Linux API, Linux networking in the enterprise data center um, and cloud. And that's where Cumulus Linux is. So my background has all been in that. And um, what the, um, the story here is you have a unified automation control of all your infrastructure, the servers, 
to the um, to the network fabric. And since it's just Linux, you can use many of these automation modules uh, natively, right? Uh, there is not much uh, changes needed. There are Ansible modules for the Linux server, some of them that you can directly use on uh, to the um, switches. And the picture actually shows you that um, the Linux switch is nothing but, again, it shows uh, the ASIC shows up as a PCI uh, device with the N ports. That's how the switch of infrastructure enumerates uh, uh, the system for you. And on the telemetry side, again, um, since it's an open box, open uh, Linux API, uh, many of these uh, existing telemetry uh, solutions, open telemetry solutions just work. Uh, and you can have a common infrastructure between your server and uh, network fabric. Next. Okay, uh, dent architecture, um, diving a little bit deeper into what components are present in dev, uh, in dent and um, the switch dev driver and so on. Okay, so dent again, open NOS for the networking edge, edge first. So which means that uh, the requirements of the edge NOS like PoE and other infrastructure comes uh, first. Um, so SwitchDev is the core, uh, the networking API is the core. Uh, SwitchDev is largely not really um, seen to the user, right? The user just interacts with the box or the Linux networking as he would do on a server. Um, it's the kernel that abstracts all this in the layer called SwitchDev. Switch ports appear as NIC ports. Uh, in the demo, uh, we'll show how that really looks. Um, and this is Debian based. Um, ARM, ARM is another, uh, the first architecture that it supports, but obviously uh, Debian and ONL have support for other architectures. Open protocol implementations. Um, being an open source NAS, it's important that we uh, integrate open source uh, implementations and with the last few years in for open networking, there have been uh, many open source implementations or there has been a uh, huge uh, surge in open source protocol implementations. Uh, FRR is one of the, uh, so Dent uses FRR and FRR as you know, is one of the popular hottest open source uh, um, routing stack, which is uh, an LF project again. Um, it has uh, support for Unicast, BGP, OSPF, and then even multicast protocols like PIM. Um, recently, it's also got BFT and you know um, VRRP and so on. And it is soon becoming the one stack protocol suite, right? With the increase in the number of protocols it's supporting, which is which is nice for the community. Um, I myself have seen it uh, grow over the last rapidly actually in the far last few years with things like EVPN um, and so on. Feature velocity through Linux native tools. Um, again, as soon as the kernel gets a feature, there are tools that are built, some by kernel developers and some by the open source community around building that ecosystem. And of course, there are all vendors behind it who contribute. Uh, so the contributions for all this come, uh, I mean, the space from where these contributions come is suddenly increased. You're not just a NOS uh, vendor or a NOS community right now, but the community is the entire, entire Linux community. So the acceleration at which these um, tools are being developed or the velocity at which these tools are being contributed are rapidly increasing. Um, even the debugging tools uh, for that matter, whatever is happening happening in the Linux community these days with eBPF and with uh, perf and so on, those become readily available. So yeah, that's one thing that surely excites me, of course. Next slide. So SwitchDev. Um, SwitchDev actually started a long time ago uh, when um, in a way, when Cumulus was thinking about it, when the vendors was thinking about it, applying Linux networking to switch ASICs, right? Um, whatever we have learned from building networking or network hardware acceleration in the Linux community, applying it to other devices in your data center infrastructure, or you know, like in this case, distributed edge infrastructure. So the thought of SwitchDev came long ago 
uh, because it's very, um, when you're working on a Linux system, it's very apparent that, you know, uh, the driver or the hardware support coming out of the box is critical. It makes things so much easier. So the seed to get switch dev or something like switch dev in the upstream kernel started like say nine years ago when we were all talking about it, when many companies came together and we needed a hardware vendor. And that's when Mellanox actually submitted the first switch dev driver. So subsequently, um, as part of this whole effort of um, supporting switch dev or the Linux kernel networking for these ASICs, there has been not only the hardware support enhancements, but there has been um, support or work done in supporting offload, right? For routing hardware acceleration, uh, neighbor bridging and VXLAN for VXLAN, especially for eVPN, uh, for things like that. So there has been tremendous uh, support in the kernel over the last few years. And API, it's called switch dev because, well, as you know, in the Linux kernel community, you call a net dev is a network endpoint or a networking device. So switch dev, it started with the name switch dev. So it's called the switch dev project, but it was soon, we soon realized that there is no need for another special abstraction layer in the kernel. This, whatever abstraction that the networking driver or the networking stack provides for drivers existing, right? Like ETH tool, like I netlink, RT netlink and all those, they apply to switch ASICs directly. There is no enhancements needed. So there are still traces of the name switch dev in the Linux kernel, but it's not necessarily, it's not only the switch dev APIs, it's beyond that. There is uh, all networking APIs actually kind of have a switch dev uh, backend if the hardware supports it. One thing that did happen, which was new for the switch ASICs was the devlink API. Um, and devlink is a tool that is now on every Linux box. It comes with the IP route to suite this is something that Mellanox contributed early in the days. Um, what the switch, sorry, the, what the networking stack lacked was a tool that was specific to global hardware state, hardware state, right? So you could always query a single port state or you always had to go through a port with ETH tool, talk to the driver and so on. But with switch ASICs, there is a need for a global state, global resources, global hardware resource management, global tables. So there are a lot of complexities that come with it. So DevLink has given, DevLink uh, merge in the Linux kernel gave that API for extending it for many of these uh, um, um, features or resources within the switch ASIC. And Today, um, as the DevLink API or switch dev uh, offload APIs are being developed, they are not only being used for switch ASICs, but they are used by NIC vendors. They're used by smart NICs and so on. So it's in a way in the past four or five years, we have seen that networking API become much more stronger and much more inclusive for net NICs and smart NICs and PUs and switch ASICs which is a great thing for the community actually. And as these, even the NICs are getting more powerful, even the NICs are supporting higher speeds and so on. So many of the enhancements, like even the ETH tool speed enhancements, uh, port breakout enhancements, all that is applicable through your entire infrastructure. And the plus is you get contributions from across the community. Next slide. So this is a picture um, of the same thing, how uh, the Dent architecture or Linux networking stack and hardware acceleration uh, is laid out, right? You have the kernel, you have the drivers. The drivers is where the switch dev drivers come in. And you have the Linux networking subsystem about that, which is the routing stack, the uh, whether it's NetFilter, the Netlink API, um, and um, bridging VXLAN, tunneling, um, all that is the Netlink, uh, the network, Linux networking stack. The Dent will also support ONL. Dent uh, base is ONL, so it also supports ONL uh, P drivers if they're available. If the vendor is giving you Linux drivers, pure Linux SysFS interfaces, it works with that too. 
so it's 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 just simple uh, the kernel since um, the kernel can support it that is open and it's available the sysfs interface or the new abstraction called onlp which comes with onl um, the tooling is all uh, whatever right frr talks to the linux kernel data plane that's all it knows about it does not care about the hardware all the tooling is the same thing. It does not care about the hardware. So what this uh, does is it allows you to test your test your data plane uh, for your control plane without the hardware. And you know when the hardware is available, it hardware accelerates it. That's the beauty of it, and uh, that actually accelerates a lot of development time, test time, um, and so on. So I've been, um, I mean, in center of developing uh, many technologies right now for the um, data center enterprise. And it, it is a huge cost saving when you can actually uh, test, uh, switch data planes and test with the software and uh, hardware data plane. And yeah, and the picture actually shows the drivers that are available and that are, there are drivers that are in the works. Um, and switch to switch to hardware, switch hardware. Steve. Sorry, I was muted. Um, so the initial release, th this is kind of our focus for, for what we're going to release. Um, Note the tentative date is is Q4, so coming up shortly, um, end of this year, and and we're actually expecting to have a second release um, pretty quickly, um, just because there's some features that we're going to need that are in the later in the 510 kernel that um, will require testing and things that just we can't get done before the the time frame of the first release. So we're focused on the 5.6 kernel. Um, we're utilizing patches that uh, Marvell have upstreamed to the Linux kernel and patches that, that are being upstreamed. And so the goal of the, of the project as, as Dentos is, comes out is that the code that's in there and the behavior that you see is the same as you'll see in the future because it's not specific code, right? We're not, we're not just um, writing all sorts of different features and adding things into Dentos that won't be in the kernel and in the tools. And, and Rupa made a, a good point that um, each tool, IP route two, these tools all of, uh, evolve with the kernel. So every time there's a new feature put into the kernels, then there's going to be a new release of ETH tool and IP route two, and the new features are going to be supported there. And so part of the Dent project is also to make sure that we have the latest versions of all of the necessary networking tools so that we can take advantage of these new features. Um, like I mentioned, we're, we're looking at a twice a year release cycle and the first release, um, is basically uh, matching up with uh, Mars with Marvell's switch dev um, community release. Uh, we have ongoing discussions moving away from ONL platform drivers and moving to more Linux native drivers. Um, there's other discussions going on, right? About if moving forwards Debian is is the correct piece and and then that came up earlier right there was a discussion about using this for automate automotive and things of that nature to get there um, the system has to be much more embedded rather than just a generic operating system debian plus platform drivers plus um the the switch dev implementation go to the next slide So uh, Dent is uh, named after a character in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And so uh, we've 
decided that the first release uh, will be named Arthur. And our expectation is that these features will be in this release. Um, LLDP, SSH, L2, bridge, VLAN aware, um, configuration persistence, uh, zero touch provisioning, um, L3, L4 ACLs, we've standard on TC flower, moving away from IP tables and um, ECMP, uh, STP, um, VLAN trunking. We have uh, gone through them all, but they also support their things like a DHCP server, which is very specific to, to the, what the space that we're going into, where this could be a store, this could be a small branch, and having a server and or a relay would provide um, significant value to, to people. Um, support for Ansible, um, some debugging tools, uh, ETH tool, as we mentioned, and, and ETH tool doesn't come for free. You, you have to actually write your drivers, which in SwitchDev, to, to work with the ETH tool in order for you to get the expanded uh, um, pieces of ETH tool. And then we have some initial scale numbers, 32,000 Mac, 2,000 IPv4 routes, 3,000 ACL entries. And then we're looking to have a, a rudimentary PoE management tool that will allow us to, to monitor and, and configure some of the, the underlying PoE hardware so the if people deploy these poe switches it's not just a passive inline poe device um, things have gotten better lately but it used to be the poe devices if you plug them in incorrectly they could get the wrong voltage they could blow themselves out right so it's it's important that with a poe switch that you have some level of, of management and, and visibility. And go to V2. So V2, um, at some point we'll vote on the name. Uh, it will start with B. There's some pretty cool ones out there, but past that. So VXLAN, um, for VXLAN, we're, we're waiting for the support from Marvell um, because we feel that it's important that, that VXLAN works across the board. There are certain things that could be implemented based on what Mellanox has in the kernel. Um, Mellanox's switch dev implementation is much more robust, has, has many more features. And so while we expect that Marvell will, will start to somewhat catch up, over time, we, we want to make sure that if you use DentOS and DentOS hardware, that the features work across the board. Um, IPv6, uh, IPv6 technically works. There, there's no reason that it doesn't work, but um, we don't have all of the features that we'd like. Um, for NAT, we're, we're looking at uh, um, any needs in, in switch dev for supporting that. ISIS, um, because of how it functions, um, also needs some work within switch dev. Um, we're looking to use uh, netconf open config. Some people may be interested in that. Um, it's already available within FRR. Uh, PPOE, EVP and multi homing, uh, 801. Dot X. Um, we're trying to keep the features low in in the next release, but still um, add features that, that are usable and important for our use cases. So next. So the Dent ecosystem. Um, you can kind of see here, if you go to the top, you have Oni. Um, Oni is kind of the root 
of any open NOS at this point. And then um, we have Linux, FRR, um, FRR being the tool that will probably mostly be interoperated with, running BGP, OSPF, those, those features. Um, we're currently using the uh, Open Network Linux Builder. Um, we've heavily modified things to to work for, for DentOS and added significant features, uh, new kernels, support for ARM64 platforms that um, previously we only had examples for. We're using Debian switch dev. Obviously the Linux Foundation is involved here and, and we look at using Ansible for different configuration and for testing. So the CICD framework, um, this is maybe somewhat hard to read, but essentially it's, it's what you would generally expect to see in in CICD is we're we're building um, at the moment we build with Jenkins and then um, we push code out onto hardware. We also do some level of virtualized testing, and then um, we have test cases that run for for different features, regression, things of that nature, and. Uh, we can go on to the next. So generic topology, um, some of the things that we do, right? We're, we're trying to match what uh, we, Amazon, see as, as important features along with uh, the community, what the community sees as important features. So you see things like bonds between the spines. Um, and then this is a, a spine leaf um, access topology, right? And your access switches are running PoE, and they're they're handling the uh, APs, and they're they're handling the cameras, and and things of that nature. And there's a lot of L2 going on in the access switches, and so that's another feature that we've been um, focusing on to to make sure that that we're able to properly partition and um, keep VLAN separate and things of that nature. These, these are all things that should work, um, but we have to make sure that they work correctly with the implementations. And then uh, and see, we have power cyclos test servers, right? There, there's, a lot of, um, there's a lot of hardware in this uh, scenario. Go ahead. So we can do a demonstration. So the demonstration, um, I'm going to run it off of uh, my system. And then we're going to um, talk to it, uh, both, uh, both Rupa and I. OK, get the share Same screen here. up. Um, and Stephen, while you bring up this share, we had a question from uh, Jan. Um, Marvel switch dev community release refers to the drivers net ethernet uh, Marvel press deck code submitted by plvision.eu. So I think that was a clarifying question there. Yeah, that is correct. I don't know the history behind it. I don't know if Steve knows, but. Um... I do not, and I lost that screen. Okay. It's a quick time <laughs> check also. Uh, Steve, <laughs> Trishan, how many minutes do we have for the demo? Please. About 10. About 10, okay. Ah, so the community released the drivers yeah, so um, that code is actually submitted by Marvell. So the Prestera drivers are, are coming from Marvell. And uh, you can actually just search for like Prestera, for example, if you go look at RC1 for the 5.10 kernel, 
you can search for repressed error and you'll see what um, what's in the kernel at the moment and what's expected to go in 510. Um, one of the cool features that's going in 510 that we're very happy about is next top groups, which is a feature that FRR 7.3 started supporting. Um, and without it, uh, 7.3 didn't work on switch dev without putting in configuration to say to disable next off groups but we're we're excited that um come the the 5.10 kernel we'll actually be able to just run frr the latest 7.3 7.4 7.5 on top of this without having to go in and make these um configuration changes so here in this demo I have a system. Um, this is a Delta DNI built ARM64 based platform using the uh, Mellanox chipset. Um, so the naming context is the TX4810. So there it is, the X is, is Mellanox and it's 48 um, 10 gig ports. It's, it's a bit different than many of the switches you will see out there because it only has 48 10 gig points. It does not have special uplinks, 40 gig, 100 gig, any of that nature. It's just this. And, and this, again, fits within the use case and it's cost reduced. Um, it's significantly cost reduced from, from what you would pay if you were running a, uh, a switch that, that had the um, QSFP uh, ports and, and things of that nature. So here I have a script um, that we're going to run that will run some commands on this box. And the first one is um, link show uh, input Rupa. Yeah. So this shows all the uh, ports. Uh, we've been talking through the presentation that your switch ports actually look at look like NIC ports. So basically, IP link uh, is a command from IP route two, uh, and this is showing uh, the ports similar to your ETH zero, the management ports. And this one, like Steve says, it has forty eight ports. And and for anyone who's wondering. Yes, those are test max. Um, we we try not to burn max as as we're going through uh, EVT DVT, um, and and really focus on on only uh, utilizing max within the systems that will will be deployed or are heavily used within the lab. So we also have um, support for ETH tool. And here we have a switch port three, which is a, a fiber connection that is running at, at one gig. Um, and this kind of shows the, the flexibility of what we're doing, right? So this is a 10 gig port, but I have a one gig SFP in it. So we're, we're seeing that um, here. So we can also get information and here you can see it just says driver is the Mellanox spectrum. And so as far as we're concerned, this is just a, another network port on the, on, the, on the box, right? This isn't something special that um, we, we have to support. It just, it, it's a network port. You use UDEV rules to control it and everything looks like it, it does in a, on a normal Linux system. So um, e tool minus M, we're just providing more information here. The SFP module information. Um, and this is using again, the ETH tool infrastructure in the kernel. There's also, this uh, Go ahead. 
sorry. So this is the Devlink API that we were talking about earlier in the presentation. The help just shows you what commands it has. And this, um, this command has, is being enhanced as we speak. It's getting a lot more support in the Linux kernel in the current uh, work going on upstream. Um, enter. Yeah, so this shows you the PCI uh, information. So you don't necessarily have to use the devlink command on a physical uh, the SWP port representation. What this allows you to do is, you know, for example, break out, break out a particular port into four ports so that the name doesn't matter. The port name doesn't matter here. As long as you give it the PCI ID, it will do the work for you. We don't have an example of a breakout port here um, because it's all using one gig and 10 gig uh, here, but uh, that is that was the first API that went into DevLink actually. So the resource, the hardware resource is again another uh, example. Uh, this is showing the Mellanox hardware resources, how they uh, uh, represent their hardware resources, but the devlink infrastructure in the kernel is very generic. It's a name uh, value uh, thing so that it gives some flexibility uh, to hardware vendors to represent their resources. Uh, this is uh, IP route show, the kernel fib. Yeah, it, it's very boring on this box. Um, yeah. Mainly, I, I have a, a, a server and Intel Nook that's hooked off of it um, yeah. for providing some some test capabilities, and then um, an uplink to another switch. Yeah, the only flags there I would like to mention is uh, you must have seen the yeah sorry Steve you can't go back but <laughs> the RT offload and RT <laughs> trap flags uh, are actually tell you that, you know, the hardware is programmed to either, uh, the route is in the hardware and the trap is basically telling you that, you know, the hardware is programmed to punt the packet to CPU. So those are special uh, switched up flags for routes that you will see. Right, and here, this is E0. So this is the management interface. So you don't want traffic traversing the box from the management interface. And here is the uh, offload. And then here we can see that we have a hardware monitor yeah. name. Um, I, I think, it, yeah. And so we can look, here is our, our temperature input, right? So this is all again, just straight in, in Linux. You're, you're just pulling this data out. And so you don't have to have special drivers or, or any of that sort in order to, be able to pull this information. Um, this, for some reason, didn't work, um, but that's the nature of having EVT systems. But sensors does work. So you can basically see, you know, what the what the temperature of of the different uh, parts are, and then. Um, the front panel ports also, what, what they have. Um, yeah. um, we can see the, the board temperature, all of this, the fans, the fan speed, all of this is, is available to you just directly through um, Linux. And then that ends that one. And it's going to bring over, if it will fit onto the screen. Um, so something I find interesting, uh, which is that um, I also run Dent on a Mellanox box, the uh, 2410, uh, because I it, the main difference is it's x86, but otherwise, everything else is the same. And and so we we can look at uh, ETO minus M and things and, and see this type of data. Um, and that's that's it for the demo.
if people have uh, any question. We have 10 minutes for Trishan, I think, to finish the slides. So we'll go back to Trishan. I think the slides after this. Uh, yeah, I should have the slides. So this is the, the backup slide. So we'll jump through. Yeah. So so this I just thought was a really cool picture. Um, I was racking up these different switches in the lab, and um, when I took a picture, it, it just looked really cool. Um, but you know, this is hardware diversity, right? This is multiple vendors. This is multiple different types of systems, and um, all available. Um, with dent running on them. Okay, and that's uh, just some screenshots here of the uh, same commands that we ran. Okay. Uh, great, and this actually is a good segue. We had a question from Robert is, uh, what's the best way to keep in touch? Uh, is there some technical mailing list for the project and that's open to the public? Um, so that takes us to getting involved in the DENT project itself. Um, just to recap, as we mentioned earlier, we we're trying to build out this ecosystem of contributors and community members. So we'd like to invite everyone here to attend, um, to participate in the community. Uh, the project is open. We do have open technical discussions. Uh, there's the TSC meets weekly and they have open calls. It's open public. Uh, the way the project is structured right now, we have uh, the governing board, which is sort of responsible for strategy, budget allocation, uh, marketing, resourcing for the labs, uh, policies, legal. And, and then we have the technical steering committee, which uh, Steve leads, which is really focused on the technical direction of the project uh, looking at it, and we're also looking at cross project collaborations there. Uh, and is the developer's voice uh, to the governing board? And they kind of co equal parties in this uh, project. Uh, let's see. And ways you can engage and participate in the project, as we mentioned, please join us on the weekly calls. You can subscribe to our mailing lists. Uh, I'll have the link just to the next slide. Uh, like this, you're participating in this developer event. Hopefully next year, we'll be able to do an in-person hands-on uh, demonstration and uh, workshop for that. Uh, we're always looking for participation in the documentation, uh, contribute to documentation, testing Dent on your hardware and gear, uh, no ASICs. If you find bugs in during when you're run, trying dent out, please submit them so we can take a look at those as well. Uh, and one part we didn't touch on is we are looking at building out the testing infrastructure. As we mentioned during uh, the earlier uh, slide, uh, as we built out the CICD, we, we do want to have sort of a continuous regression testing plan for dent and that we built out as well. How, you can, how do you participate in DENT? Uh, we have the DENT website. Uh, please join, you can register for the weekly TSC calls um, under the calendar in the lists, the listserv, which is lists.dent.dev, which is our groups.io server. <clears throat> and uh, the code will be available uh, as the release comes out uh, later this quarter on GitHub under the DENT project. Uh, as well as the documentation, which will also be posted on GitHub. With that, we have a couple of minutes left. We'll just uh, open it up to questions. So feel free to post your questions. And if you'd like to get in touch with us, uh, feel free to send us an email at participate at dent.dev and we can uh, route your question accordingly within the project leads. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, my co-presenters, uh, Steve and Rupa, for taking the time here to present to you as well. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, so we'll open the floor up to questions. If you want to go audio, we could uh, just raise your hand. We could uh, allow you to talk if you like, if that's easier. So let us know. And 
I'll just go back to this slide so you have uh, that information. We uh, sure, Colin. Let's uh, let's open up the mic and let folks chime in if they like. Since you wrapped up. Great. I think we answered a lot of the questions that came in line uh, during the presentation itself so if folks have uh, have any other questions feel free to send us an email uh, and join me on the post on mailing list um, if not we'll be on the uh, channel here for a few minutes Uh, we have a question from uh, Jan on the uh, the Q and A window. Yes, the signed off by uh, it says PL Vision. I'm yeah, I'm uh, not sure why they signed off as PL Vision, but the people who are submitting patches are the people from Marvel that we have been um, talking to or collaborating with. Uh, Marcus, yes. Uh, uh, the question is, will the slides be available? Uh, yes, we will uh, post that on uh, Sketch uh, on, as well after this uh, session. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, just I'm curious about the PL Vision too. So maybe we should just check with Marvel on the next call. Dent call. We're happy to answer any questions. Um, you don't specifically have to focus directly on Dent. It can be about switch dev. It can be about dev link. It can be about how we see the uh, the future of things going on. Um, really, we're, we're open. I would recommend if anybody is, is interested that um, they come to one of the TSC calls they're on Wednesdays at uh, 7 a.m. Pacific time. And uh, they're, they're um, relatively heavily um, attended. And uh, in general, we, we have uh, people speaking about specific projects. Um, for example, this week we had uh, someone talking about um, open embedded and Yocto and, and the value of that so that we could look at that and, and, and have some options as to what Dent could base itself off of uh, in the future. So we do have a question. Do we think that switch dev is going to replace Psy, et cetera? Um, tricky question. So if, if switch dev gains, enough support if switch dev, for example, if Broadcom um, releases a switch dev driver, then um, it would be pretty straightforward for almost anybody to use it. And uh, in fact, switch dev could go into any project that's using Psy now um, and support certain platforms uh, today. But um, we don't expect to replace Psy, uh, but you may see a Psy to switch dev um, interpreter or, or something like that in the future, rather than Psy being based off of uh, different vendors SDKs.
Great. Uh, so I'll just take this opportunity once again to kind of thank uh, my the presenters today. And uh, oh, well, we have one last question. We'll maybe do that as a, take that as the last question uh, from Dennis. It's uh, I saw many L3 features. Uh, which appears to be in many focus of dent, am I right? Or are you planning to support further L2 features? Rupa, do you want to take that one or? You're Sorry. muted. Sorry, yeah. So L2 features, um, there are quite a few in the list. If you see that there is basic bridging and actually the first thing that went into the marble driver was also uh, basic bridging. There is STP um, and VXLAN of course is uh, extension of L2 domains, right? So VXLAN in the future. So yeah, there is no, um, no only L3 focus right now. It's both L2 and L3. Yes, I hope that answered the question. Yeah, IGMP snooping is in the kernel, so IGMP snooping will work, L2 ACLs will work. PVLANs, uh, there is, you can do PVLANs with ACLs on Linux, so that that's how it will just work. Uh, but yeah, there is L2 and L3. Great. Get over time. Yes, thank you, everyone. Thanks, thanks Steve, thanks, Rupa. Thanks for attending. You're welcome. Thank you.